All right, people, I'm back. Back again. Talking about binding the strong man. For all you men that want to chase after women and think you're strong, think you're stronger than you think you are, and you really aren't. You know, the strongest man in the world was bound by, strength wise, was bound by a woman. He broke free after many trials and errors. And you can too. But just think, Solomon never broke free according to the word. They never showed that, like I said, Solomon repenting or saying, hey, Lord, I forgive me. I messed up. I think if he would have did that. Now, I'm not saying Solomon's going to be in heaven or hell. I don't know. It's like God leave a few mysteries there for you to just think on. Like, wow. I wonder what happened to Solomon. Yo, even Ahab, I talk, I read, I was talking about, I'm like, man, look at Ahab. Ahab repented. But if everything that God told Ahab was going to happen still happened to him, but he repented. And God forgave him. But he still told him what was going to happen was going to happen, no matter what. But I said it. With David, he forgave David for it. You see, the thing is, God looks at people's hearts. And everybody's heart is different. So you can't look at it like this is how it's going to happen for me. No, it's, it happens different for everybody. You know, you got to find out what your weakness are. But I'm going to tell you something. The majority of us men's weakness is woman. And a lot of women's weakness is man. You know, you ever see two people that are real strung out, real bad. And they are walking together. They're they walking together, a man and a woman. It's either the woman following the man or the, the, the man's following the woman and both of them are headed in the wrong direction. You understand? It happens all the time. You know, but you got, we got Christ people. You see, we got Jesus Christ and we got the whole book, the whole history book of do's and don'ts and mistakes and repenting and forgiveness and punishment and all this, people. You might want to take it serious. Mm -hmm. Oh, that could never happen to me. I thought the same thing. That could never happen to me. And the thing is, the majority of us are looking for that helpmate. Mm -hmm. You see, the reason why many of us go through it and God bring us through it so we can tell other people so you don't want to have to go through it. Just like when our parents used to try to warn us about certain things. I'm going to tell you something my mom used to say back in the day when I was in my first love. My mom was like, I don't trust him. I ain't saying she's a bad person. It's the person who I was with, but my mom was like, I don't trust him. <laughs> and I'm like, I love him, mom. I love him. I'm going to marry him. All right. Learn. Six years later, found out she cheated on me. But she wasn't really, she was just fornicating. She was young. You can't cheat on somebody who you ain't married to, so she was just, but I was heartbroken. Boy, that's, that led me to join the Marine Corps. <laughs> it hurt me so bad, boy, and it put a bad taste in my mouth. I'm like, well, I'm going to be a, a whore too. That's how I felt after that. I'm like, man, I don't trust no one, especially no woman. But the part, part of me deep down still yearn for a partner. Just a dog chasing, looking for the right cat. That's it. And the majority of us are the right one. Content. Think about it. If you can have one, that's just, I'm going to give y'all a person in the Bible that is the token textbook Christian. And I'm going to tell you his name. Job. One wife. Many kids went through hard times, never divorced. Wife told him to curse God and die. Yet he didn't divorce him. He stayed at it. He stayed going through what he went through. And God blessed him. And gave him and his wife more kids. Because I used to think I was like, did God, did Job marry another person? No, he fought through it. Now, I believe his wife was a believer. But she had that, the devil stepped in and gave her some doubt in order to get Job to turn his back on God. And Job resisted. Job was like, no, should I take good from God and not evil? 
That woman was like, hey, curse him and die, son. Die. He was like, you sound like a foolish woman. But Job stayed the course. To me, he's one of the perfect examples of a Christian today. You see, Job would sacrifice on the altar for his kids. He'd pray for his kids. He'd help poor. He would do everything. He was a man after God. Look, take my servant, Job. A perfect man. What made him perfect? One that feared God and eschewed evil. So, I don't think nobody will be ever more righteous than Job. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. He's in there for a reason. You know, he went through hell and high water, but he never cursed God. Then he had a, a lot of people to try to bind him. Mm -hmm. His three friends that were enemies. I always tell people that like, how the devil, the devil attacked Job. He attacked him through his friends, through false doctrine, through false teachings. How you know that? Because he said, God said, you didn't say what was right about me as my servant Job has. So those three friends that came there was not operating in the will of God. It was operating in what they felt was right and how they felt Job was. But God knew Job and God knows you. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's right for you. He knows what's wrong for you. And he knows sometimes you're going to make some mistakes. You see, the devil is trying to do what? Bind you. Like, take Jesus Christ and the temptation. He didn't use women to try to bind Jesus. But they said Jesus witnessed, I mean, experienced every temptation known to man. Everything that we go through. Everything that's coming to man, Jesus resisted. He resisted. You understand? But he tempted him with money, riches, and stuff like that. Or try to, you know the temptation, you know the temptation of Christ. I ain't got to go through it. And Jesus refused. Tried to bind him with riches and honor. And this day, look at the look at the world we live in today, people. It's hard. You know, the world's like women show your bodies. Men show your bodies. Lust is running rapid. And a lot of people are being destroyed for their sakes. It's I never thought in a million years I see married women. On Facebook, half naked. And their husband down. That's my baby. What? Where that come in for me? If, if these women were truly happy with their husband, they wouldn't be showing their bodies. I'm just being real. That ain't normal. <laughs> Once you get what you want, what's the use? I can see when you was young and foolish. Before, when you, before you met your husband and, or your wife, you're trying to Put yourself out there. I can understand that. But once you get married, what's the use? You still want more attention. I'm telling you, people. I'm starting to feel like Paul. I wish all men were like I am. <laughs> Single. But the thing is, God wants to give you, not all of us, majority of us, a husband or a wife. Not just any husband or wife. One that's virtuous, one that's going to keep you right in, on the right path with God. That's his goal for us. Some of us. Or some of us probably ain't going to get married. Take Samson, never got married. Wanted it, never happened. Still did what God wanted him to do. But I'm, the reason I'm telling you all this video is to be careful, men. Thinking that. I'm strong enough to handle multiple women. Or I'm wise enough to handle multiple women. In order to become wise, you must become a fool. <laughs> a fool. You understand, people? Be careful. Wait patiently. You know, I'm like, God, why do you got me talking about this while I'm going through marital problems? Have you read Hosea Houston? Yeah, I read it. Okay, then. Hosea still had to minister when his wife left him. He didn't stop ministering. He didn't stop spreading the, the truth because his wife was an adulterous woman. 
he kept going as a man of God. Mm. You know, a lot of people think that every man of God is going to have that perfect wife by his side. But the thing is, that's not a truth. Mm. Sometimes God may put you with somebody to y'all mold and grow each other. And eventually, y'all become the virtuous. She becomes the virtuous wife and you become the head. It might take time. Because I think a lot of preachers are telling you, hey, you ain't supposed to date anyone that doesn't love God and this and that. Well, they don't really know that. Mm. You understand? Because they don't know who's God's going to change. Mm. You ever met a couple that both of them was crunk and out in the streets doing Lord know well, and they met God and God changed both of their lives at the same time? He didn't just lead them. I think God put us with imperfect people to let us realize we're not in, we're not perfect. So we won't judge people so harshly. I, I mean, I see people judge Samson so harshly, but they'll give Solomon a pass. That's crazy. Why? Because Solomon was rich and famous, but yet he still changed his heart. Me in regard, I'm tell y'all straight up. Me personally, I'd rather be Samson than Solomon. But I'd rather be me. So if I had to choose, I'd rather be Samson. Samson wasn't a complete failure. He judged the children of Israel for 25 years. He destroyed the Philistine palace. Some of the things he went through, he was meant to go through, just like you meant to go through some of the things you going through, especially in relationship problems. Because you're trying to find that cat. And you women out there too, y'all got to be careful of men. The Bible talks about men misleading silly women. It talks about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And he talks about women. So, if you leave the, read the Bible, you'll see who your enemy could easily be. Anyone. <laughs> but if you keep going, God's going to step you into exactly how he wants you. Some of y'all are going to be single for the rest of your life. Because of whatever purpose he has for you. Some of y'all are going to get that woman or that man. Because that's what he wants for you. But some of us are going to be like Samson. And you guess what? Some of y'all gonna be like, some of us gonna be like, end up like Solomon. Turning away from God. I'm just being real, people. Mm -hmm. That's why you gotta stay prayed up. This Bible is here for you to grow you, to teach you to keep praying, to keep seeking God. And whenever you think you got it figured out, Look in the mirror and be like, I don't have it figured out. Keep growing. Don't ever try to reach a point where you think, I know everything I need to know. Because you never will. All you need to know is, God is good. God is my Savior. Jesus Christ, I need you. I need the Holy Spirit to keep me from women or that's going to mislead me. And try to bind me and turn me against my father. And same with you women. To remove you from men. That's going to turn you against God. And lead you astray. You understand people. And eventually if you faint not. He's going to make it right for you. I'm not here to prophesy to you. I'm here to tell you. Stay at it. Stay the course. And don't be tricked by anyone because of this word, love. Mm -hmm. Love. Love has taken down plenty of people. But aren't you glad that Christ loved us so much that he gave his life for us? There's no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you, says the Lord. So what happens when you do not? You are an enemy of Christ. 
So if you teach doctrine, you teaching other people things contrary to the Bible after you didn't read it and see the issues in it that we face and you just embrace that like it's a hey it's okay they did it they had many wives hmm people y'all better be careful one that's all you need don't try to think about how it was back then God had a plan back then and the thing is he has a plan now too for each of every one of us that love him. And he'll forgive your past mistakes. But you got to stay at it. You can't stop. You see, that, don't, ain't that frightening? That Solomon didn't stay at it. And it's just the, this the scare. This the part though. I feel sorry for Samson. I'm just being real. I feel sorry for Samson. You know, he didn't know as much as Solomon knew, but I don't feel sorry for Solomon. I'm just being real. He knew better. <laughs> the wisest man to ever live. But am I saying I couldn't have fell victim to the same thing? No. Same way with all these preachers and pastors and that mislead the flock. They know better. I don't feel sorry for them. If you decide to teach the gospel and mislead people. No. Because you know better. And a lot of y'all know better. And you're using the word of God to cause people to stray away from him. That is not cool. Misusing your name, they so fake. They still think you're born on Christmas Day. But your beginning don't have a date. Mm -hmm. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And you died on the cross for our sins. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus that he made this book for us to lead us in the right direction and not the wrong so nobody can mislead us or confuse us or deceive us. No matter if it's your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You understand? I can't go back in time and change anything but I can pray that God sets me up in the place that he wants me to do according to Jeremiah 29 11 and it's the same thing for you he has a plan for you you just got to keep him in the forefront and any woman or man that means you ill will that means to misdirect you lead you on the wrong path God will remove from your life I'm a walking testament of it you are a walking testament. Many of you are a walking testament of all the things that God has delivered us from. Mm. It may not make sense, but remember, God knows what's best for you. He knows the plans. He knew what Samson going to go through before he went through it. He knew what Solomon going to go through before he went through it. Why? Because he warned them twice in a dream. Hey, and guess what? He's warned me too. He's warned you. If you haven't given your life over to Jesus, I advise you to do so. So God can set you up. You dog, you. <laughs> with the right cat. And some of y'all cats out there, I'm saying women, he's going to set you up with the right dog. Mm -hmm. When you ain't got to run from, or run to, or run after. Mm -hmm. When it's not going to manipulate you. And the thing is, he might transform the person you're with. And to that person, may transfer you to the person. I'm just saying, I don't know how it's going to work. I just know God is a miracle worker. And he can work out all things for your benefit. Have a blessed day.